Good evening everyone, time for another member update. I've been a little behind lately because I've been going to a personal trainer at the gym two days out of the week and uh, I have been barely able to move <laughs> some of those days. So I apologize about uh, getting behind on people's emails and comments and things like that. Um, I'm going through strength training, trying to build up muscle mass and, and reduce body fat uh, to muscle ratio and it's a lot harder than I thought so um, wish me luck it's it's uh, it's rewarding it's encouraging uh, but it's also very difficult so this is the Dow Jones transport average and you can see here, I want you to concentrate on just the recent activity here you can see the incredible volatility this is the weekly chart so you can see that we had the drop from the high is kind of where the market top there and then we got kind of a textbook uh, decline something like that probably right in there you can see right where that uh, drop off occurred right there the final breakdown then that that's when we got a precipitous decline but you can see we have an amazing rally going here in a very very short period of time now that's actual true volatility but we know with indices like the VIX, that's not a true measure of volatility. It only measures downside volatility. It doesn't measure upside volatility. If the VIX measured all volatility, upside and downside, this time period would mark the highest level that the VIX has ever seen. And of course, that's we're not anywhere close to that. So what's going on in the stock market? I don't know. It, it may be a rally that's based on the latest Fed uh, backing off of the, uh, sorry about that, I'm trying to get the air off, uh, the Fed backing off of its rate rises and uh, the stocks might be doing exactly what the metals are starting to look like they're beginning to do and, and just rally on the possibility that the Fed is just going to do one tiny little half percent, in quarter percent increase in rates and then turn around and head the way everyone else is heading, which is into negative interest rates. And so maybe the market is sensing that, I don't know, but you can see extreme volatility, the likes of which we really haven't seen, except for maybe in this period of time at, at the end of 2011 or down here during the financial crisis. Uh, another market that's very interesting right now is oil. Uh, you can see it, in the long-term scheme of things, the rally that we're in really isn't that significant of a rally. But when we get up to short term, you can see that it's a fairly sharp rally. It's rallying up into a fairly difficult resistance area here, uh, marked by about 45 bucks, And uh, it's going to have to get through that. Same thing with silver. Silver really needs to get through uh, the... 1750 up to it really needs to touch 1850 to $19 to put all of this resistance behind it and and turn this into some kind of underlying support and challenge this next resistance area which is this whole range from about 22 bucks all the way down to about 18 bucks so for me to get bullish on silver really bullish on silver I'm going to have to see it actually top this high right here at 1850 at least peak above that and that's going to tell me that, uh, that that something is really happening so let's go to some other stories here now people have mentioned the uh, first majestic stock rally and it has been significant as far as percentage wise but you have to keep in mind of how low of a price we're coming from so you can see we're coming from about three bucks maybe even less here 273 up to it's a it's roughly a doubling so a hundred percent gain but you have to keep in mind here that we've seen a lot of rallies in the past not this large of a percentage um, but we have seen a lot of false rallies on the way down here and this could be another one uh, that we did have a huge breakout when we had that rally into the fifty dollar silver price but if you look at the performance here, basically it went from about five bucks to twenty-five bucks. So it was a five-fold move. Well, well, silver went from about eight bucks to forty-eight bucks. So that was about a six-fold move. Maybe if we come down in here, uh, we can get a six or seven-fold move. So they're roughly equivalent. Uh, the question is, is, 
do you want to be secure with your bang for the buck being nearly the same with physical metal or do you want to risk uh, not only have currency risk but have uh, a broker risk as well as having company risk and all kinds of debt risk and and then of course if you look at the financials this type of thing why why aren't they making any money you can see the earnings per share is negative uh, the the PE is not available because they're earning they don't have any earnings they have a market cap of a billion so uh, yes people are playing it and I guess if you have a lot of spare money to throw around uh, I'm definitely not interested so next story I want to talk about Ethereum a little bit here this is one that I was looking at shorting but you know it just it ran so hard it, it was kind of like uh, stepping in front of a moving train and you can see uh, the move here, we're talking under 1 to 15. So that's a 15-fold move, 1,500% move in a couple months. Congratulations to the people who were on that train. Uh, I had no idea it was going to go that high. You can see that it's now at about $800 million market cap. It went over, it ticked up above a billion. And that's really incredible. The other thing that's uh, very interesting about this is that you can see the breakdown here in the exchanges. Poloniex is definitely there up with incredible volume. That Ever since Cripsy went under, Poloniex has just exploded in exchange volume. And, and none of them did anything like that beforehand. So it's been overall a positive to see Cripsy go away. Of course, if you're like me and followed my advice and got all your money off of there before they shut the doors. But uh, it's overall, it's been a positive. There's still no resolution to that situation as far as we know. Big Vern, Paul Vernon, is hiding out in China. Who knows what's going to happen? But uh, you can see the distribution of these exchanges. Poloniex is a U.S. exchange. Gatecoin, I'm not sure where that is. Uh, Kraken, I think, is in Europe. Uh, Junbi, uh, China, Bittrex. And so Yobit is up here. Well, that's that's pretty surprising. So um, it's kind of a wide uh, distribution of trading going on and uh, that's very very encouraging so Bitcoin is kind of stuck around 400 bucks uh, that's good and it's bad you can see it's sitting at about a six billion dollar market cap the money that had flowed out of Bitcoin into some of these alternatives you can see it's kind of flowing the other way now but uh, that's that's what we have in these tide ebbs and tides of uh, these uh, overall the money into crypto is 8.65 billion it topped I think it almost hit 9.5 billion and now it's backing off. I don't think it's going to be very long before money going into cryptocurrencies will be over 10 billion dollars. So we'll just keep hitting the news stories. It's going to be kind of a grab bag tonight. Um, I want to look at this this Trump story and this is kind of interesting. This is announced on the official Atmex blog and this is Donald Trump is going to accept gold bullion in lieu of dollars on Atmex lease at 40 Wall Street. Kind of interesting, not a kind of fluff piece, but uh, there's got to be some kind of purpose behind this. For the first time in history of the Trump Organization, Donald J. Trump will be accepting gold bullion as a security deposit. Atmex, one of the largest U.S. precious metal metals dealers, will give Mr. Trump gold bullion today as a deposit on a 10-year commercial lease for the entire 50th floor at 40 Wall Street, also known as the Trump Building. The signing of the lease today, Atmex CEO Michael Haynes will present Donald Trump with three 1 kilo 49 gold bars weighing in a, a total approximately 96.45 troy ounces. Donald Trump said the Trump Organization has always strived to be the gold standard. We welcome Atmex as our tenant at 40 Wall, a prestigious and historical location. The legacy of gold as a precious commodity has transcended to become a viable currency and an accepted universal monetary standard. Central banks around the world are holding gold as a reserve asset. It is also a terrific, potentially lucrative diversifier in a portfolio, especially with such volatility in the stock market. Interesting. Donald Trump kind of pumping gold there. And uh, I don't really know what to think of that except for the fact that uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, next story, I wanted to cover the debt to the penny. Now, I, you know I always do the yearly series. You can see we're on March 19th of this year, back to March 19th of last year. It's actually the 17th, but close enough. 
And you can see here, remember this, what I pointed out in this series here, that the 18152 trillion, how long that went on. You can see it went way, way, way on into the future, all the way up to uh, the fall. Now, we're not seeing that. And that means, guess what? That means trillion plus deficit. So we've got 18152, and we're at 19188. So we're at one point. 03 trillion now on the deficit and uh, that is probably going to grow because you can see that uh, in March how much it's gone up it's it's rising it did have this spike high of 125 but then you could see it was in the 90s then the hundreds 112 125 and then all of a sudden 161 151 188 a new high for March 17th so if this continues to rise at a steady pace all the way into next fall, is uh, which it did last year, will we be looking at a $2 trillion yearly deficit? We very well could be looking at that. And uh, that is absolute insanity. Now, let's look at uh, the best evidence, uh, John Titus video. I'm not going to play any of it because... Uh, it's it's very long, but it's very good. Uh, he pretty much does a full indictment of Eric Holder and Lanny Brewer and some of the assistants that were there in the Justice Department who basically refused to prosecute any of the banks. And uh, we know that they were engaged in criminal fraud. He proves it in this video. They were engaged in criminal fraud. And uh, as he says, the rule of law is broken in this country. It indeed is broken. I think it's actually been broken for a very, very long time. Now, one of the examples he cites of the rule of law working was the SNL crisis. But uh, I think the SNL crisis is kind of overblown. Yes, a lot of people went to jail. He said over 1,000 people went to jail. But uh, there were also scandals going along side of the SNL crisis at the same time none of which were prosecuted. Of course, we know that Hillary Clinton and the Clintons have never been prosecuted for any of their shenanigans, neither the Bushes or any of the others. And there's so much more that hasn't been prosecuted. I would actually say that the SNL situation was the exception rather than the rule. I think the rule has been that the Congress and the presidency and the Justice Department and most likely the Supreme Court have been captured by the crooks on Wall Street who are interested in continually fleecing the American public of their investment dollars, their retirement money, and uh, whatever they can steal, basically. But still, an excellent video. If you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to watch it. So finally, I wanted to jump over to Atmex. Now, I did start by looking up the price on the lunar series and uh, the half ounce monkey is ticking up it's 13 to 14 dollars so you if if you're thinking about picking them up i think they're still below 12 on provident and on gainesville but they do seem to be ticking up a little bit on atmex here now i wanted to look at the the koala series here because this is one that i've stacked in the past i I think the last one I bought was the 2014, um, yeah, 2014 half ounce was the last one I bought. But I just wanted to kind of go over the performance here of, of the koalas and compare it to the lunars. And so you can see here I've done it uh, silver only and then price low to high. You can see the first one that comes in here um, is the 2015 half ounce. Now the 2016s are already out. Uh, there's the one ounce, so uh, I don't know why the half ounce aren't listed here, but uh, they are out. But you can see that the 2015 half ounce is still selling at basically the lowest price that these went, under $12. Uh, we saw on Gainesville, I saw some half ounce coins for under 10 under 11 but generally on Atmex, 11 to $12 is the best price. So that's not an encouraging sign for this coin that... The, that the series, let's see how many there are, but uh, that the previous year's series, there's 558, is not appreciating really at all. So that's that's a negative. 
Uh, the 2012 is out, so we can't go by that. Here's the 2015 one ounce. You can see it's under $20 for the one ounce coin. So really, uh, if you like your coins in a plastic container, and I do, I definitely like that. And if you like the design and you think it has some potential, yeah, it's worth paying an extra buck. That's basically what you're paying, an extra buck over an eagle or a maple. Then that's a good deal. Not something I'm interested in right now. Here's a 2016. Uh, let's check the design here on it. Not, uh, I guess it's okay. It kind of harkens back to the older ones maybe. Uh, I'm not really impressed with the coin but you can see it's still it's at that under 20 price now we do have the 2014 half ounce this is the one that I the last one I bought and you can see that's decent they're asking $23 for it that doesn't mean that it's performing on eBay like that but you can also see the 2011 half ounce here they're asking $27 for it and uh, so and here's the one ounce I have a few of these uh, 2011 one ounce up at $35 the 2009's yeah, I bought those all the way back in 2008, so that was definitely not a good deal for me when I could have been picking up Lunar Series coins back in 2008 rather than these Koalas, but I didn't know, and uh, hindsight's always 2020. So there is some decent performance. Here's the 2012 one ounce up at 43 bucks. We have a few of those, not a lot. The performance is decent, and it's definitely better than your average Eagle. There's no question about that or your milk spotted maples or philharmonics or anything else but in my mind it doesn't live up to the price performance and rarity and desirability and design of the lunar series again that the lunar series is the strongest and i think the monkey's probably going to be a top performer i haven't picked up any monkeys yet i'm still waiting for them to it, it's getting close for me to pull the trigger on them but uh, I'm waiting for it to look like they're going to run out. But I think it's probably going to be a top performer because the, the buying has been so dull that there's probably going to end up being very, very few of those coins minted, and it'll probably be a, a fairly strong performer. So back to the charts. We have a long way to go for silver to prove that this is a bottom. Uh, we'll pull up the MACD here to just get a comparison of what we're doing compared to the past we have had some I'm sorry that's momentum we we have had some somewhat unprecedented moves in the MACD but we have to remember that the the MACD was so oversold you can see that we did have this crossover this is the daily we did get a crossover into the positive the zero line and unlike this last time we did we we haven't failed yet uh, last time we got a positive crossover it maintained looked like it was going to break out and it crashed and went down below the zero line this time uh, will it happen it may but it looks like it's turning up it definitely does not look like the last time it's not rounding off it looks like it's turning up and we do have new highs although we did have a new high spike right there with the MACD not confirming this one we have a new high spike with the MACD confirming. So that's the big difference. Now out to the weekly, you can see we're, we're pushing towards that uh, confirmed zero line crossover for both lines on the MACD. That's gonna be big because you can see we really only have one fake out here in 2014. We didn't get both lines crossing. And then the last time was this uh, falling knife rally that we got from about 26 bucks to 36 bucks during the bear, the big bear move from the 2011 top. And that's it. So that's the only prior move that we have where we had a breakout of the MACD, both lines crossing the zero line, was that uh, 2012 fake out. And then, of course, the monthly we're crossed over uh, we have a positive crossover of the lines themselves which really is unprecedented all the way back to the the initial rally that ran to 50 bucks just this one fake out being the exception but uh, you can see we've been crossed over for over a year now on the monthly and now both lines are rising and they're trying to accelerate up to that zero line if we cross through the zero line on this monthly, where will the price be? I have no idea, but I suspect that the price will be higher than here. So with a crossover, I think we'll probably be looking at like $26 to $28 an ounce 
if we get a crossover of that zero line. And we'll talk to you next time.